Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pixel Village and I am Radha Krishnan. <laughs> we are definitely excited about this video that we this is something which we always wanted to do but you know there is a typical saying in uh, India called ghar ke murgi dal barabar. Anyway, it roughly translates to something that is at home, you know, don't really get too much of importance. This is something which I want to talk about, something which were a part of my profession and it's been with us for many, many years. But this topic came to the top of my mind again after a long time, uh, after meeting a friend of mine who is uh, an automobile aficionado. I mean, he, he owns, um, you know, dozens of top rated cars, sports, muzzle, all forms of cars and he enjoys driving them for a reason. He was talking about how he enjoys shifting gears when the engine revs up to a particular limit and how he enjoys the way the steering connected with the, uh, the road and almost like communicating uh, all the time with the road and how it kind of translated or transferred into his hands. There were a few things that I could really relate to because I like automobiles but a few things that he mentioned really hit the wall behind me because it was it was he was talking like a puritan but i could really kind of feel where he was coming from uh, to a great extent photographers are also definitely photographers from my vintage are definitely like that they 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 all had a reason why they bought a certain camera and owned it and continued to own it uh, you know, there is a reason, it is not just pure function, it also had something more to it, which is probably a little intangible. You need to kind of hold the camera in your hand and use it to kind of feel it. Of course, it is different to different people, but in my case, it was always Nikon. <laughs> you know, the first professional camera, small format professional camera, it used to be called a small format, by the way, was this Nikon F5, which I still own. I bought this in 2000 and spent a lot of money to own this. You know, it shoots about eight frames. It's an autofocus camera. It shoots eight frames a second, which means a roll of film of 32 uh, frames is kind of gone in four seconds flat. I mean, and I've done that too. Uh, amazing camera works. It feels exactly the same uh, the way I, I felt in 2000. And it is more than just a workhorse. It's like, it's like a tank. I mean, it, it is a tank. But people say the F6 is even better, but uh, I never needed one, so I never bought one. I still have the F5 with a few original lenses that I bought from that time. I still use them occasionally, but you know, for obvious reasons like rolls, processing, printing, etc. Anyway, this is one amazing camera that I still very proud of owning well but since we are living in a digital age let me talk about things which are a little more relevant to you and me uh, so my first digital cameras the professional digital camera were a medium format camera uh, and the small format camera they had not started calling it a full frame yet at that time it was the h20 a 16 megapixel camera um, it used to work along with the Hasselblad 503CW. The digital cameras actually took a long time, you know, to kind of mature to a nice and usable uh, cameras uh, in, in small format. And then, then, of course, they started calling it as a full frame. So the first one that I bought uh, was in 2008, I think, or 2007, was the Nikon D3. I, on a, on a weak moment, I sold it and I still regret it. If I get a good sparingly used D3, I still want to buy and own one because it was still to me a 12 megapixel camera, shoots about 10 frames a second, out of focus, uh, shoots no hybrid, right? Shoots only stills, 12 frames uh, and it's a 12 megapixel, no, 11 frames, 10 frames, doesn't matter. 
12 megapixel camera gave me one of the most satisfying results I've ever seen. Well, of course, after that, you know, the story continued, of course, you know, instead of buying one camera in 10 years, I saw myself buying probably 10 camera in one year. Anyway, that's exaggerating a point a little bit. Uh, somewhere in 2009, after shifting from Nikon to another brand and trying coming back to Nikon, I bought my first serious small format uh, DSLR. Well, and that is the D3X. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it can take a couple of hits like that. The D3X apparently is still the flagship. In, in true sense of the term, still the flagship from Nikon because after D3X, so their nomenclature used to be, uh, let's say, a D3, a D3S and a D3X. So they had the D4 and D4S, they had the D5, probably they have the D5S too, I don't know. And they now have the D6 also, but they never came up with something like, which had an X with it, which is like the professional grade. So this still on record, the flagship camera from Nikon. D3X, if you don't know, is a 24 megapixel shoots five frames a second, no video, um, and it's a camera which, well, again, you can take to war. I've been using this camera from 2009. I paid full money. I did not get a Naya Paisa discount from the man. I think I paid about 456,000 Indian rupees, if I'm not mistaken, in 2009 to buy this. So as in 2021, in October, it's about 12 years, around 12 years old. And I would rather say it's 12 years young because I've shot so many professional commercial campaigns with it. If I get a campaign today, I think I'll still pick up this camera and shoot. It's not to talk down upon any other brands or cameras or resolution. It's just that I'm so comfortable with this camera and the kind of images that it has given me. So uh, in early 2010, so it's from 2012, 13 to 2017, I was on, I was doing one campaign and in, in which, which actually uh, you know, needed me to travel regularly and shoot on that campaign. I used this camera throughout for that shoot. And I had, of course, uh, you know, like a fallback camera. It was the, uh, it was for some time, it was the D800. Sometimes it was the D800E and sometimes it was the D810. But this is my go-to camera. This is what I would choose. And the images that this ca camera has given me is still some of my favorite images. There is nothing about the LCD to write home about. It's just a reference. I mean, it's very bad. If you, one of you pick it up, shoot an image and look at the LCD, you get scared because it's got a, it is not as highly resolved as the new ones. But then look, people like us, would look at the histogram. I mean, I look at the uh, image for its framing and uh, probably some expressions, etc. But, well, I go by the uh, histogram. And uh, what else? Of course, also to set my menu after which you are shooting. I mean, I still use the original battery and it is still lasting. It still shoots five frames a second. You know, uh, okay, so I am at uh, manual and I'm at single shot. All right, so let me take the card out. You know how, let me switch this guy off. You know, I mean, these kind of precautions and this kind of will to last feel is a little difficult to see these days. When I say a little difficult, it is good old fashioned CF cards. I mean, this cost a lot of money in those days too, right? And yeah. So this kind of shoots. You know that feeling that I get? Uh, I I have the choicest word for that feeling, but I can't use it on uh, on on YouTube for a for you know. Otherwise, I'll get uh, some kind of objection from YouTube. So you know what I mean. 
it's 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 amazing and uh, it still gives me fantastic uh, results and I'm so happy so I like to share some images that I shot with this uh, camera It also has all the interesting, you know, uh, connections, connectivities and all that. It's, it's fantastic and uh, uh, I, I still use it. Like I said, if I have an option to go out and shoot, I think I'll pick this camera to any other camera in which, which I own now. Well, there are lots of other cameras that are out there which I don't own, which are probably currently as we speak is better. but this is my favorite camera then came like i said the d800 came in i gave it back uh, the d800e came i think i sold it and during that time i also accidentally became uh, a nikon ambassador in india so you know equipments were a little easier to come by and then uh, we started shooting videos uh, somewhere along, I think 2012, 13, I think we started shooting videos. Uh, the the D810, D800, I think we started shooting videos with. Then D800E came and we started shooting videos with. And 810 was the one which actually hooked me on to hybrid uh, you know, video shooting. So we still have the D810. I am not featuring it here because I thought it was a tad slower than my current favorite. Before I come to my current favorite, I'd like to kind of go back and talk about another camera uh, that we bought for filming. Um, well, of course, it's a fantastic still photography camera, but we bought it for filming. Little bit of exploration, little bit of learning or understanding the uh, film medium made me realize that APS-C or Nikon calls it fondly the DX mode is probably the most appropriate uh, uh, format to shoot uh, videos. So we went and bought the D500. You'll be surprised, we bought two of those only for filming. Well, we had started Pixel Village by then and uh, we, we had lots of classes to shoot. We had lots of BTS videos to create besides doing, you know, this kind of videos. Well, we bought the D500. If you talk the still photography capabilities, mind blowing. 10 frames a second, 20 megapixel and fantastic high ISO response which actually makes this camera currently the finest camera that you can buy for sports and wildlife now I'm going to do a video especially for that okay with an amazing 500 mm 5.6 AF lens a Nikkor lens I'll, I'll, I'll do that video very soon but we started working with it now this camera had a little more advanced features of course it could shoot 4k uh, it had a tiltable screen and of course it would shoot uh, let me see where we are okay continuous high and now this is a mechanical camera right of course this also has a mechanical shutter but you see the way all right now that's the one here is my D3X. Okay, and let me give it back. And here is the, you know the feel that I get 
while using is exactly what the automobile uh, enthusiast friend of mine was talking about while shifting gears or feeling the road on the uh, you know steering now there is no substitute to that feeling um, it is not just about creating visuals it's about that the whole experience of creating those images and i'm sure lots of you who are uh, watching this video will resonate with this thought and also another very very important thing is the way they maintained nikon maintained the layout uh, not forgetting the menu right exactly uh, the way Almost all cameras had that same design ethos uh, reflected in their designs. I mean, right from here, okay, there was not too many focusing shifting points. There was no menu screens, LCDs on this, but it still had this uh, joystick. You know, this was used to move your focusing point around. You didn't have too many, but whatever you had, you would use something like this. And they had carried that forward exactly same way in all the other cameras, including their entry levels cameras had the same thing. And here, this is here. After 12 years, it still feels like new. I mean, there is no loose feeling. Uh, if, if you know what I mean, is nowhere all buttons feel exactly the same way after so many actuations it still feels exactly feels the same way now that 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 talks a lot about a camera right now it's the same thing again here i have all my connections my hdmi mini uh, microphone headphones and the usb connections Fantastic, and of course, it also had a tethered flash sync cord connector in it, which is currently currently missing from most of the mirrorless. Uh, of course, we shoot, you know, with trigger these days. Well, there were many reasons why those things were there. We'll talk about it in another opportune moment. We also bought power packs, uh, battery packs for this camera. So without the battery pack, I think it shoots uh, uh, eight frames, I think. And with the battery pack, it goes to 10 frames. Doesn't really matter. It just works very well. And the videos that we shot are fantastic. So we always would loop the video out and uh, record it outside on an Atomos Ninja or an Atomos Shogun. We had an Atomos, uh, um, now we have a Ninja 5, but in those days it was Ninja and the Shogun. We used to record them on that. And uh, the photo focus was pretty accurate in, in spite of this being a DSLR, but of course nothing can be compared with the current modern mirrorless cameras, which gives you smooth, uh, you know, uh, follow focus, automatic follow focus. But I've not really missed any shots because of that, because we used to plan our shots well. But the images that, still images, that whatever that we have shot with this will bang on. Like I told you, the most interesting one is this high ISO sensitivity. It could shoot very comfortably up to, I mean, they claim that you could shoot up to 51,000 plus whatever ISOs, but I've not gone that far, but 6,400, absolutely no problem. 12,800, no problem. So a best camera for sports and wildlife, bird photography, even today. And we're going to do a video on that. And that's a promise. And let me talk about the camera that we love the most. And probably, uh, I know that is going to probably uh, invite a lot of, uh, you know, controversy or or a d different opinion, of course. That's okay. I think probably one of the finest cameras ever made by anybody is the D850. Well, if you look at it, this is, an, uh, is a crop sensor camera and this is a full body camera. It's the same. So in the, we, nobody complained about why this full frame camera is big or this full sensor camera or the full frame camera is only as big as the crop sensor. I mean, I don't know where it all originated. Uh, the, the, the reference to size of the camera and how compact the camera is. 
I suppose it's all because I think we should blame it on the mobile phones rather than um, a camera manufacturer. Uh, you know, you are now asking for a more compact camera and paying the price for it. Well, that's again another story for another day. Well, D850. I had the great opportunity of being a part of that uh, eventful uh, D850 launch in Japan um, that also coincided their 100th anniversary uh, and I happened to uh, you know visit I was lucky enough to visit Japan as a part of the Indian team it was popular uh, all around the world that trip was popular all around the world for uh, a wrong reason too uh, but well I still use this. This was this is amazing. I, I have a box which was given to me. <laughs> this, by the way, was gifted to me by Nikon. Okay, I did not pay for this. Whoever participated in that Japan trip during the launch of this camera was uh, gifted one camera, and uh, the box had my name printed on it. I still have preserved it very carefully. Man, that was a mind-opening trip many reasons i met about 20 odd photographers from all across the globe and of course japan was another reason i shot some images on the street um, images indoors and stuff Well, with this camera, the camera which was gifted to me, and I started using it. Same thing, I mean, eight frames a second, and oh, oh, I'm on single mode. This is something, this is the way I shoot usually. You rarely find my cameras set on continuous high mode because, you know, you are planning a shoot, you're communicating with your models, and you're taking one shot at a time, not like going to go, I'm, I'm not on a war field where I need a machine gun to shoot down people. I pretty well, uh, pretty accurate uh, uh, on on the field. Same feel, you know. I mean, that's something. I don't know. Maybe there is a special instruction that is going down to the designer from the you know the the top men at Nikon. They saying, look, do whatever you want, but never miss or never compromise on the feel of the camera and. Definitely they've done that. This, according to me, the finest cameras that ever produced. This is going to go down in, in, in digital camera history as one of the finest cameras. And uh, it, I, it's still my favorite camera. Shoots 4K, shoots 45.7 uh, megapixel image, still images, fantastic uh, LCD, and of course, beautiful, uh, you know, uh, viewfinder works with the entire range of Nikkor lenses. Well, I'm not talking about the Nikkor lenses here today because, you know, that's a lot to talk about that too. I own the, the so-called the triumvirate uh, among the Nikon lenses, the 1424, the 2470 and the 7200. But uh, in the mid-range, the 2470, my Favorites are the block lenses. I have a 24 1.4, a 35 1.4, a 50 1.2 and 1.4 and an 85 1.4. Now, most of my campaigns are shot with those lenses on this D3X. Of course, after 2017, you know, we started using this also whenever there is high resolution images are required. For example, uh, when I have to do a lot of uh, interior shots or food shots, um, I used to, you know, wherever there is sharpness and detail is required, then this is our go-to camera. And for lifestyle and people shots where I don't really require, you know, uh, 
skin and the vein in the in the arteries in the eye and stuff which you going to anyway remove it later right so why do you got to take it in the first place there the the emotion is more important the light is more important the softness in fact in the olden days people used to spend extra money to buy a soft lens uh, biting sharpness was scorned upon um, well if you want that now you have a camera that's why i keep talking about Uh, the importance of buying an equipment based on your actual requirement okay i don't think there is one camera for all purposes but alas that's how the situation has come down to uh, but i don't miss an opportunity to kind of talk to people about the importance of uh, picking the right equipment which is suitable for your kind of job the d850 let me at the risk of uh, repeating once again tell you is probably the best camera ever made best dslr ever made there are few things that i must definitely talk about the d850 uh it also brought in the first time in a full frame digital camera an ability to stack images and shoot you know that was something which was very very important because they knew that people are going to shoot landscapes uh, people are going to shoot uh, uh, architecture and interiors and products using this camera so they wanted to give and of course you know in the in in a traditional technical camera you would use a different technique altogether to get uh, sharpness and depth in one frame right you use your tilt and shift and uh, all that to create that uh, uh, you know create that image with like i said maximum sharpness and maximum depth it was not possible or technically absolutely not possible with uh with the dslr or any camera with a fixed back so they decided to bring in it was available in some of the uh, smaller cameras like the micro four thirds but they brought that technique into this so this became the first uh, uh full frame camera with such high resolution uh to give uh you know the the focus stacking ability well of course now lots of cameras have that but this camera brought it in 4k fantastic focusing color great uh processor so it had the newest processor at that time and well like i said that nikon feel in the camera the menu is something that i must mention this is one of the finest menus in any camera period <laughs> i used to kind of uh, you know uh, joke with my friends photographers who use other brands is i think you should send your camera guys to nikon for a crash course in how to design a menu you know jokingly but anyone who's used and become accustomed with the nikon menus will swear by it it is so clean i mean it is definitely is a case study for sure well of course we didn't have to worry too much about uh, you know battery life and things like that because you know it could give a lot of uh, shots in one charge every part of the body even after so many years of use still works perfectly well the leather in this kind of weather the indian uh weather well i i use my equipment carefully all right i mean i don't kind of uh take things for granted so everything is taken good care of F touch wood i can say other than cleaning the sensor uh i have not had any breakdowns whatsoever in any of these cameras including my f5 Well what else I can keep talking on and on and on about these cameras and uh, I I think it'll be highly inappropriate if I don't talk about my favorites from other brands too though it has never been a part of my uh, professional kit I have a few favorites from other brands and which I will talk about in the next video but in the meantime I would definitely love to know whether you liked or resonated with what I I talked about I said about this cameras these particular models especially and uh, if you have any comments um, for or against uh, what I said well please let me know in the comments and I'll be really happy to go through them if you are interested in uh, learning photography please head over to pixelvillage.com we have a set of 
fantastic photography teachers there taking classes for you. They are all recorded sessions. You can watch the bouquet of offering and if you like it, you can subscribe. Stay safe. Bye for now. Yeah, true war horse, yeah? Yeah. Hey, let me try this F5 again. I think I finished two rolls of film. Just like that. Fantastic. Cut.